In today's beginner video, we're talking all about loops in Swift. We're going to talk about a couple different examples of using a for loop, both iterating over arrays and a dictionary. Also going to talk about how to use the where keyword in a for loop. And then we're going to build a fun little simulated basketball game using the while loop. But before we dive into that, a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is an in-person coding and design bootcamp that offers housing at no extra cost for full-time immersive students. Now, if you know my story, I myself am a bootcamp grad. It was part of the process to help launch my iOS developer career, which I'm going on year five now in this wonderful profession. But aside from their iOS development program, Dev Mountain also offers programs in web development, software QA, and UX design. They even have a career services team to help you with job placement and financing options are available. And Dev Mountain loves hearing from my viewers. So if you or someone you know is ready to start this journey into iOS development, be sure to check out the link in the description. All right, back to the video. So here we're looking at an Xcode playground and I have an array of NBA All-Stars, which is just an array of strings, which is their names, the starting five for Team LeBron. And then I have a dictionary of the All-Star positions. Cause again, I'm gonna show you how to iterate over both arrays and dictionaries, right? And the dictionary is just their position and the name, right? Power forward, center, small forward, point guard, shooting guard, and then the name. And on that note, that's basically what a for loop is doing is it's iterating over a list of items. So we'll start with the basic for loop and I'll explain what it's doing and then we'll build upon that. So the basic for loop is for player and I'm, I'm calling it player like I get to name it whatever I want for player in NBA all-stars right that's this list of players so you want to name this something that like makes sense like I wouldn't want to name that for dog in NBA all-stars right so player made sense and then we want to do print player so what a for loop does is it go, it iterates over this list. So NBA All-Stars has how many players in it? Five, right? There's five names in here. So this for loop is going to run five times. And what this is doing is every time it runs, it's going to print player. So the first time this for loop runs, player is gonna equal LeBron James. The second time it runs, player is gonna be Anthony Davis. And the third time, Kawhi Leonard, uh, et cetera. So when I run this program, you should see a list of five names get printed off in the order that they're in. So let's run it. And here you go, it printed off five times. LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Kawhi Leonard, Luca James. So that is the super basic for loop, but it is also the most commonly used. So in this example, we were using NBA All-Stars. So the for loop is only gonna run five times because that's how many uh, names we have in that list. Well, with for loops, you can also uh, run something however many times you want, and that's gonna be using ranges. Let me give you an example of that, then we'll walk through it. So let's say we wanted to create an array of random numbers. So var random int, that is going to be an array of int. It's going to equal an empty array. We just initialized an empty array there. So now we can do for underscore. Now underscore is what you put when you don't need to name the item anything. Like here we needed to name it player because we were gonna print the player. We were gonna use it in the scope. Well here we're not using this in the scope. I'll, I'll explain this in a little bit. So for uh, no name in, and then you can do zero dot dot less than 25. So we're, going, we're counting zero to 24. That's gonna make this loop run 25 times. And we can create a random number. So let random int equal and you can do int dot random and then you can do again we want a number one to let's say 100 right random number between one and 100 we're gonna do that 25 times and put that into an array so now we can do uh well let's call our array up here on line 17 random ints because you know plural so now we can do random ints and then dot append and then what we want what do we want to append we want to append the random int that we created here on line 20. So again, this for loop is going to run 25 times and each time it's going to create a random number one through 100. And then we're going to append that random number to our random ints array. So now let's print random ints. And if I run this, well, I'm going to comment out this print up here uh, in the I'll start so we don't clog up our console here. So let's uh, print. And here's our random numbers, right? Uh, 25 numbers, one to 100 just randomly thrown in there. So that's another example of how you can use for loops when you wanna run something uh, a certain number of times and you get to choose how many times you want the for loop to run by using uh, this range. Essentially, we're, we're doing the same thing up here with NBA All-Stars. We're choosing how many times it can run, except we're telling Swift, we want it to run however many number of All-Stars are in our array. Now let's do an example of when we would need to use the index here, kind of uh, very similar to what we just did. So we would type, for i in zero dot 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 less than nba all stars dot count. So what we're saying here is we want it to go from zero to uh, one less than the nba all stars dot count. So nba all stars dot count is currently five. We want this to go from zero to four. 
And the reason being is that arrays are zero indexed. So back up here to the array, like LeBron James is at index zero. Anthony Davis is at index one. So it starts with zero. So that's why we do zero up to less than uh, one. We wanna go zero to four, not one to five to explain that real quick. So, uh, but the reason I'm doing this example is to show you how you can use I because uh, this is also a pretty common thing as well. So let's say we wanted to create a numbered list. Like before when we were printing out our NBA All-Stars, we just had a list. Well, let's say we wanted to number it one, two, three, four, five. Well, that's what we can do using the index commonly named I that we're doing here. So we can do print, and then let's get our quotes here. We can use string interpolation. So string interpolation to get that I, right? Because that's going to number. It's going to be one dot LeBron James, two dot Anthony Davis. That's what we're going to do. Dot space. And now we need the player name. So here, more string interpolation here. We do NBA all-stars and then at index i right because remember i is going to iterate the first time through i is going to be zero the second time through i is going to be one the third time through i is going to be two etc right it's going to keep counting up so that's what that's how this number is going to keep counting and then what we do is we pull at index i so the first time through we're going to pull nba all-stars index zero which again up here lebron james second time through nba all-stars at index one which again is anthony davis so this is going to print out one dot lebron james two dot anthony davis so let's run it and see let's comment out random ins so we don't clutter up our console here, here's a little mistake here. So zero LeBron James, one Anthony Davis. Well, we want to start it at one, but this is a good illustration of how I, like this is this number right here is basically I as it increments up. Well, we can do I plus one to make it so it doesn't start at zero, right? So now let's run it and it'll go one, two, three, four, five, right? There we go, as you see there. So I wanted to showcase how you can use I uh, as the index in case you need that when iterating through your array. Okay, now let's talk about iterating through a dictionary, right? We've been doing arrays this whole time, but we have our dictionary here of all-star positions. A dictionary is a key value pair. In this, case, uh, in this case, key is the position, which is power forward, and the value, LeBron James. So key is center, uh, value, Anthony Davis, right? So key value pairs are, are the trick here. So it's very, very similar to the typical for loop with a little difference. So you do four, and then you do your key value here, and you get to name it what you want, right? So I wanna do position, uh, comma player, right? Because again, back to the dictionary, the key is a position, the value is a player. So uh, in all star positions, right? That's the name of our dictionary. So we're going to iterate through the dictionary. Now we'll have access to our position and our player. So now we can print string here again, more uh, string interpolation. And we'll do the player is starting at, at the, and then we can do position position. So this is going to say like, uh, Luka Doncic is starting at the point guard position, right? And it's going to go through our entire uh, dictionary of players up here and print that out based on what position they are. So let's run this. Well, again, comment out this print statement. Don't want to clutter up the console. Don't want to confuse you. So see, Kawhi Leonard is starting at the uh, small forward position. Anthony Davis is starting at the center position, right? You can see how it iterated through the dictionary and printed out what we wanted. Now, if you noticed, right, we're not in the same order, right? Like the order's all mixed up. Like we didn't do LeBron James, then Anthony Davis, right? That is because dictionaries are not ordered. Like there's an arbitrary order. Arrays have a very specific order, but dictionaries, there's no order to them. So it just kind of prints it out randomly. Next up, let's talk about how to use the where keyword uh, in a for loop. So back to our NBA, our array of NBA players, uh, you may see something like this. I'm gonna type it out kind of the, the long way that some people do, and then we'll fix it with the where keyword. So you may see this, right? For player in NBA All-Stars, right? And then you do, okay, I wanna check if James Harden is playing. So if uh, player equals equals, and then James Harden, then I wanna say, then I wanna print, you know, yes, James Harden is playing in the game, right? But that's only if James Harden is equal to one of these players. Now we can write this a neater way, because if you see, right, you do the for loop and then you have like a nested if statement. So you're starting to get this little pyramid action here. And, and this is a super simple example. You can imagine if this was a little more complex code, how more nested statements can just be, again, you call get that pyramid of doom. It can be kind of hard to read. Well, if you have a for loop with a pretty basic if statement, this is a great place to use the where keyword. We can kind of put this all in one line. I'm going to type it out again so you can see the, the difference between the two. So let's do uh, for player in NBA All-Stars, and then where, and it kind of, it reads well too, player equals, is equal to James Harden. So now you basically just combine this if statement in this one line here uh, in the for loop. And then if that is the case, we'll just copy and paste this so I don't have to type it out again. 
copy and uh, paste. So let's actually comment out this for loop so I don't we don't print out anything confusing. Comment out that print statement so we don't clutter it up. So now this is the only thing running or the only thing printing. So look how it reads. For player in NBA All-Stars where player is equal to James Harden, right? It reads nicely and it's nice and neat on one line. So if I run this, it should print, yes, James Harden is playing in the game. There it is right there. So again, that's an example of how you can use the where keyword. And a common thing you should look for on like when to use this is, uh, again, if you have a for state or a for loop with a pretty basic if statement that should be a good indicator of like hey i can probably use the where statement here all right let's comment this out again and then we're going to move on to our while loop where we get to build a fun little uh simulated basketball game so a while loop if you think about the word while right a while loop will run as long as a certain condition is true so if you can imagine, right, like if that condition never turns true, the while loop will run forever. That's called an infinite loop. That's a bad thing. So the big thing to remember with a while loop is that you have to have some trigger that's going to stop the while loop at some point or else it'll run forever. So here we're going to simulate the all-star game. So for us, our trigger is going to be the team score. Like our little simulated basketball game, we're going to play to 21. So let's set that up real quick. So let's do var team LeBron score equals zero var team Giannis score equals zero. So these are our triggers, right? When, when this score hits a certain number, that's when we're gonna stop it. So that's actually how you start with the while loop. So you say while, and we're gonna say team LeBron score is less than 21, right? Because if, if one of the teams scores 21, stop the while loop, the game is over. And then you can do and here, team Giannis score is less than 21. So what we're saying here is this loop is always going to run as long as a team has less than 21 points. So building this little game, the first thing we wanna do is like, who scored? Like what team scored? So that's the easy way to do that. Let did team LeBron score, that's gonna be a Boolean, and we want this to be random, and uh, Booleans now have a dot random. So this is basically flipping a coin for us, right? It's gonna be a random, true or false. Uh, so did team LeBron score, true or false? So every time this runs, we're gonna say, hey, team LeBron scored or team Giannis scored, and it's gonna be completely random. And when a team scores, it can be one point, two points, or three points, right? You got the three pointer, the normal two pointer, or if they get fouled and make one free throw, it can be one point. I know there's a four point play, We'll leave that one out. So anyway, let score equals uh, int dot random. And here we can pass in a range. And again, one, two, three. Uh, one up into three, not one, two, three. So I'm going to get a random number one through three. And then now we do if did team LeBron score, we want to increment their score by the, the score we just, just did. So team LeBron score plus equals, this is incrementing it, uh, score. Again, score is the random number one through three here. Uh, else team Giannis score plus equals score. So again, one of these teams is going to score. That's going to be at random. We're going to get a random point number, and then we're going to increment their score based on all that stuff. So this is kind of our simulated basketball game. And again, we're playing to 21. And then real quick, just because I want to see how the score, <laughs> how the score goes, and I think it illustrates it nicely, uh, you can print team LeBron score equals team uh, LeBron score, and then we'll we'll do this. So what you'll see this when I print it out, it's going to print out like kind of like a history of the score. So team Giannis score is team Giannis score. And then now uh, after the while loop, right? So this while loop will execute and you'll see we do the print statement down here. This is why you don't want an infinite loop because your program will just hang, right? Uh, it'll just be stuck in this while loop. So here we want to print out the final score of the game after the game has been played. So we, can, we need to check who won first, right? So if team uh, LeBron score greater than team Giannis score. Let's print team LeBron won the game by a score of, and then we can do, we want to do the winner score first, team LeBron two, and then we're going to print out team Giannis score, team Giannis score. And then we can do else, and we'll just copy paste this because it's going to be basically the same. And you'll see how this all prints out. And I'll explain this while loop. If you didn't quite get it, I'm going to go back and explain it. Team Giannis won a game by a score of Team Giannis score, Team LeBron score. All right, so let's run. Let me walk through this real quick. So while the score is less than 21, but like no team has 21 points, we need to figure out who scored. We're going to get a random number of how many points they scored. And then if it was Team LeBron, we increment Team LeBron score by uh, the score, the random score that we got here on line 53. And if it was Team Giannis' score, we increment it by one through three based on how many points they scored. And this while loop is going to continue to run until, 
right? We're checking this condition every time. If one of these teams has a, a score of 21 or higher, the while loop stops and then we go down to this print statement, right? The game is over, right? You score 21 points, game over. So let's run this and see who wins. It's like Team LeBron won this, oh, Team LeBron crushed them, 21 to 11, man. But the reason why I put those print statements in there is so we can see how the score went, right? Uh, they hit a two-pointer, then they must have hit a three-pointer because you know now they're up to five. Then the Giannis scores two, right? You can see the whole history of the game because we're printing it out, it out as it goes. And then you can see Team LeBron in our simulation ended up crushing them 21 uh, to 11. So there's another type of loop called a repeat while, and it's just a slight variation on this while loop. So real quick, you see how at the beginning of the while loop, we're checking the score. That's the first thing we do. We check the score, then we run our program, then we play our game. Well, a repeat while kind of flips that. And actually, let me uh, start writing that here so you can see. So you would do repeat, and I'll explain it after I type it as well. And then you do while for the condition here. So while down here, that's our conditional. So we can copy and paste uh, the check, right? This is the thing we wanna check every time. So while that happens, and then we wanna repeat our, our game, essentially, our logic of our game. So uh, again, let me, uh, we'll copy this paste that down here. So let me uh, comment out all the old while loop that we did, right? We're, we're moving on. Now the repeat while runs the game and then checks the score. So it's just the order of things happening. So let's run it and see if Team Giannis can get a win. Team Giannis finally got a win, 22 to 13. Good for them, good for them. Um, but again, it, it runs the game, then checks the score. Whereas up here, we were checking the score, then running the game. So sometimes you may need to do uh, one before the other. And if that confused you, I gotta, gotta give a shout out to Antoine Vanderlee, whose blog post pointed me to this tweet. And this tweet does a great job of explaining the difference between a uh, while loop and a repeat while, right? The Roadrunner checks if he's on the edge and then he runs, right? Whereas the Wiley Coyote, he runs and then checks to see if he's on the edge. And you can see the difference in what will happen. That's not to say that repeat while is always bad. It's just in this case, you probably want to check if you're on the edge before you run. So that's a great little comic that uh, nicely illustrates the difference in loops. So those are some of the basic loops in Swift. Uh, if you like my teaching style, check out the link on the screen, seanallen.teachable.com. I started releasing my own courses, so check that out if you're interested. We'll see you in the next video.